Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Well, we, we just got back from uh, Disrupt New York, a hackathon, some other Hackaday related events, and uh, it's back to time to make some videos here. So I want to do a series on logic, and it was, a, it was recommended to me that I start at the beginning. Who'd have thought, right? So I want to do some basic logic, uh, talk about true events, right? And then we'll get into ones and zeros and volts and things. But I also want to talk about aids in thinking about logic and some useful tricks. So also, uh, before we wrap up, uh, I want to hit some of the electrical properties so that you know about the voltages. And after that, in the next series, uh, I want to talk about Karnoff maps, static switching hazards, truth tables, booleans, and then ultimately, let's uh, take the entire path towards making a CPLD and uh, maybe our own FPGA shield. And that's if I stop screwing up the FPGA shield schematic. But today is about basic logic. And yes, if you know all this, skip it. Well, maybe there's some cool stuff in there after all. Been doing this a long time. So let's get started. Starting with a simple inverter, which takes a signal and inverts it. It negates it. Uh, sometimes we used to call it bubbling it because this is a bubble here that is the, the symbol for uh, true low. And uh, so we would actually use it as a verb. Um, but be aware that most of these components, uh, logic gates, can be drawn with an alternate symbol. In this case, it's still an inverter, but what I'm saying is, well, I was looking for a low to make a high as opposed to a high to make a low. Or sometimes you just use that, but this, this is a, a, an aid for helping you think about your logic if it gets real complicated. Here's the equations for it, and I've shown three different ways to draw the equation. In the old days, we would do this in the middle here. Uh, on, because it was all hand drafted, so we would make these lines. We would actually sometimes have a line over a line, you know, uh, if there was multiple uh, terms in there. And then we started using slashes because it was kind of a character we could print, but then it's kind of also a, a special character. So sometimes in the HDLs and stuff, um, you'll see it printed as a bang, you know, meaning to invert this this particular symbol. So why is the inversion of a very simple? So one thing I recommend. Uh, as as you work your way through logic, is not only think of it as ones and zeros or uh, highs and lows, but think of it as true and not true. Um, sometimes that that alternate way of thinking will help you get through a really thick circuit, or you just divorce yourself from the polarity till the very last moment, uh, especially in, in uh, FPGAs things like that. So in this case, uh, an and is if a and b are true, then y is true. That's this equation right here in our little boolean table. The way we would write it in the old days, we used to use a dot, right? Yeah, it was hard to read, but we knew it was there. Well, uh, you know, as we m went to more less hand drawn, we would end up with an asterisk, and then uh, the ampersand will fill in, and then in the HDLs, a double ampersand because a single ampersand often means a bitwise and uh, thing. So now there is an alternate symbol for this. If you think about it as well, one and one is one, or true and true is true. Well, we can also draw it as if not true or zero or zero, or both zeros, will yield a zero. So this is an alternate way of uh, drawing this. And I'll show you a little later on a circuit where I actually did this. But be aware that this is the same thing as this. Now, an and is a simple case where we invert the, the, uh, the polarity of what a true is. And, and honestly, if you're including a, a quad and or NAND gate into a design and you don't know how all you're going to use it, I'll throw an AND in because I can get an extra function out of an AND. I can make an inverter. If you have just AND gates, you'll, you can't make an inverter out of an AND gate. Here's one of my favorite, the exclusive OR. Squirrely little sucker. Uh, LS86, I think it was. Um, here's our squirrely little hand-drawn signal for how to make an exclusive OR. Sometimes they use it as an ampersand. Sometimes it's used as a um, the little caret symbol, we call it. But quite simply, it, it is true only if, if there's a 1 and a 0 or a 1 and a 0, or a true and a not true. If both of these are equal, it will not be true. So it's exclusive. It's an OR but not both. Now I want to show you something kind of unique that you can do with an exclusive OR gate. And uh, these days where you've got lots of uh, processors with I.O. lines, um, 
you, you know, you're generating your own logic a lot of times. We we don't use TTL like we did in the old days because of the uh, uh, how many controllers that are out there these days. But here's a way a controller can change a polarity of a signal. Let's say this is a high stream signal uh, from you know an opto isolator or something like that, and you just want to flip the polarity. What we have is we have the signal coming in, the signal out, and if the invert line is low, the signal in and the signal out are identical. Yay. But if we want to invert the polarity for whatever reason, and I've done this, uh, making this high, now whenever it's high and a, um, a high and a high, it will actually make a low. So we get the exact same signal, only it's an inversion. And so this is a useful little technique using an exclusive OR gate. Now I'm going to show you some, uh, some, some output functions of chips, open collector and tri-state. Um, you might think these are simply bus drive or output drive capabilities, but we find that we can actually uh, generate a logic function in them. So I want to show those to you. So a tri-state part or a tri-state output is an output that has the ability to add another state. Instead of true and false or one and zero, there's this other state called high impedance, not asserted. It means the bus is free the common connection is free to go do something driven by something else. Um, since it's shared, since it's this, we, we call it Z, high Z state, um, we find we can do things in combination with other chips. So drawn like this, a, a tri-state buffer is a buffer, you no know, bubble, so it's not an inverter. It has an in and out and an enable. And so while the enable is asserted, whatever comes in the input goes to the output, but when we take the enable away, it goes to high impedance, and it'll float to some value based on something else, right? The impedance of the bus, pull-ups, capacitance on the bus. This is useful if we have a shared bus, like, like let's say memory. We want to drive it from two different things. Uh, we have an enable signal and then we'll invert it. So when we assert the enable signal, one can drive it. When we uh, deselect it, then the other can drive it. So very simple, but it, it's, it's a true logic function, especially in architecting a, a, a system. A cousin of this is the open collector. And, and an open collector device is a device that will only pull down using a transistor, quite, quite frankly. And, and it has an external passive pull up. And two devices can sit on the same bus. They can never short each other, right? Because they only pull down. Down's down and it's floating. It's not down versus up. Well, we can create an AND function. Uh, this, this will be low as long as A or B is low, because either one will pull it low, and only when neither one is low and they're both high will this resistor assert itself, and we end up with a, uh, a, a high function. So this, we create an AND function out of open collector. We can also do this with just basic transistors, too. I've, I've shown a transistor here. Uh, so that you know that's the actual device we're turning on. And, and at some point during the series, I'll show you how to use transistors for logic. Okay, here is a more complex... Huh, look at this. I broke it. Here is a more complex logic diagram. Um, and what I'm starting to show is how to uh, uh, write a logic equation. And this is important later in software, and it's also important later when uh, we troubleshoot, uh, when we create truth tables. But in this equation, it's quite simple to read. A and, it's a and gate, A and B and C and D, or not A, I'm sorry, or not D and A and B and C. So A and B and C and D, or A and B and C and not D. So quite simple, straightforward. I've used the and symbols in this case. Uh, I'll tell you that there's a problem in this. It looks simple, doesn't it? But if you're expecting this to not have a glitch when this makes a transition, it could. It's called a, a switching hazard. And quite simply is, let's say it's already asserted, it's already true, it's already high. And so this is feeding the OR gate. At the moment the signal goes low, there's a time it takes for this to become positive to, for this to become true. During the meantime, this could have become untrue. So even though both of these are true, whether this is high or low, or the sum of them is true, whether this is high or low, a transition here can cause a glitch on the output. Sometimes that matters, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to talk later on how to find these, and these get complex, 
but that's called a switching hazard, and we're going to find out how to eliminate them as we use a lot of logic, especially in programmable logic. In one last example, there's an, uh, you know, the order of operations, just like in math. So in this case, we've got not A and B. See, I bubbled it. Not A and B and C and D or E, right? So we parenthesized them, so that we got our and F. So the order of operations says that the, these are or together, um, just as you would in math. And I'll also tell you that when you look at this stuff, I, I worked for somebody one time and he did this whole bunch of jelly beans and he didn't understand that this happens faster than this. And so there's a time dimension to this and it's important. This guy will work faster than this guy, assert them all at the same time, and one asserts and the others follow. So be, be aware that time is involved. It's three-dimensional, not two-dimensional. Now, remember when I said you could draw an AND gate as this silly creature here, which is low or low is a low, and basically I'm targeting this line instead of these other three, uh, instead of this line here. Um, actually, I'm targeting these three lines other than this line here. Well, here's an example I took from an old design where DRAMs have a signal called CAS, column address strobe. It's, it's a low signal. It's a low going signal. It's a low strobing signal. It's an important low signal. You think about it as a low or as I don't even think of it as a not true. I think of it as a no in this case. So if I need to make two of these from one, again, it's CAS, it's a low, it's asserted low, all that good stuff. Then I basically, if I want a very fast delay where I only have one gate, then there's only one gate logic I can use to propagate or select a low to low in one nice clean motion and not going through um, a, a medium integration chip. And that is, actually it turned out to be an OR gate, but what I'm saying is low and a select low. So if I want to select the low CAS, low and low gives me my CAS. So the second that bangs, this will bang. And so this really helps in the in the way of thinking where the important signal is this is more a mental trick especially for when it's late at night and you've run out of coffee so here is a, a we can also use remember i was talking about an open collector being an and situation well that's not restricted to just digital analog can be logical can be involved in logic and here i have i've got one half of an lm339 open collector comparator and if either of these outputs is asserted or true or tripped, the signal will be low. Both of these have to have their conditions met for the signal to go high. In this case, I've said, well, V out will be true if V in is less than V A. Here's V A. So V in, the voltage in, has to be less than that. And he says, okay, I've let it go high only if this guy is willing to let it go high. And V in is greater than V B. So it means we have to be less than VA and greater than VB. So we've created a window. This is a window comparator. And at both times then, he says, I'm willing to let it go high. I'm willing to let it go high. Boom. Your window comparator trips. We created a logical true signal. You can actually put this in a gate in the right condition, CMOS or something, um, based on a, an analog comparison. Finally, I want to show that you can uh, um, create logic without using gates exactly like you thought they might need to be used. I used to do this trick all the time. But whenever I'd get um, needing a piece of logic, I'd sit down with data books. See? Data books, I know, nobody uses data books these days. But data books, great, they have all the gates right there for me. You can go right through the list of them. But I'd sit down and I'd find the logic I wanted, even if that wasn't necessarily the logic that was planned. So in this case, um, if I want a, 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 a logic of A low, B high, C low, or true, false, <laughs> false, true, false, I can create that with an LS139, which is a dual two-bit decoder. Well, if I look at the, the logic signals, here's what's inside, so there's a lot to choose from. I can find when A is low and, and, and B is high, I get a C out of one of these outputs. And it's actually got an enable, so if I wanted to add one more column and add a zero, I can make it zero select inputs. And in this case, I get a, a, a strange function I can do with something like a decoder. Nice cheap part, leaves me half available for my next strange function. I'm going to stop there for the series on, on uh, logic. Uh, but, that, of course, that was the basics, but you saw a few little tricks in there, and you saw a static switching hazard, and that's where we're going to pick up. We're going to talk about Karnoff maps. I mispronounce it. Excuse me, Karnoff, however you want to hear it. Um, 
and uh, Boolean tables and logic truth tables. And if we do it right, we can go in there and identify when, when things switching cause un, un, uh, undesirable results. I'll talk more about electrical properties about unknowns. I only talked about highs and lows this time. I'm going to talk about unknowns. And then um, we're going to use that. We're going to get into some PLD type software and uh, translate equations into programmable logic. It's a basis, it's, it's a foundation. You can take that all the way up to Verilogs and the other things if you want, or VHDLs. Um, but we're gonna start with the PLDs and maybe there's even some PLDs we can still use in program uh, that might be useful on your little projects, you know, the little Arduino-ish things. Maybe not, uh, we'll see. So Bill Heard from Hackaday, uh, basic logic one's out of the way, so now clear sailing for some uh, logic tables, dynamic switching hazards, and the propagation of unknowns. Have a good day.